Hi, welcome to HQ Live. I'm Vicki Hoth, Education Coordinator for Handy Quilter, and joining me today is Sue Patton, a famous, wonderful quilter with Thanks. a lot of energy. A little right? bit. A little You're bit. from Canada, but you I get am. to educate Can Canadians and you come all, all over the world. All over the world. Yeah, you spend a lot of time awesome. in the U.S. I do. So I've traveled all through Canada, the U.S parts of Europe, overseas, Africa, Australia. And you're a wild quilter. Been awesome, and I'm a little bit wild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I look traditional, but I'm not. <laughs> we're, so we're gonna tone you down maybe a little bit today little to bit. slow down, slow down, but not yes. tone down. Okay, so I'm seeing here that you've got this wonderful sampler yes. of one, one sample that you can embellish or change and make it into so many different things. Right, so I like to, you know, make very simple things that look spectacular. I don't want to learn 10,000 new skills and practice and practice for months to have something that looks okay. stunning. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this simple design concept. So this is a continuous curve. One continuous curve. We're going to follow the same travel path. We're going to use the exact same muscle memory, same movement, Dozens of endless design concepts. Okay, so we start with this. We're going to start simple. We're going to add a little of this, take away a little of that, expand a little here. All right, so we're going to keep this real close so we can kind of see where you're going Perfect. with it. But this is your start. This is my start, yes. Now, you, a quilter can't just start without doing preparing the fabric some way. Exactly. So first of all, what thread are you going to use today for what you're doing? So today I actually have a pre-wound in my bobbin. Okay. Um, I like to match my bobbin on the bottom with my top color fabric. Okay. So I have a black pre-wound superior bobbin. And then on the top I am using a 100% cotton machine quilting thread from YLI. Okay. All right, so we've got that set. We're and good to go. And what's your settings on the machine that you're going to do? So today I'm going to, going to put my eyes on so that <laughs> I can see. I'm going to set my machine at a much lower speed than if I was free motioning or doing wild willy-nilly all over the place. I want to be as precise as I can. So I'm going to use a few tricks. I'm first going to put my machine in manual so that my movement is nice and smooth and consistent. So that's stitches per minute, not stitches per inch. Correct. Now, if at home you are used to working in a stitch regulated mode, no problem. What I would suggest is you set your cruise so that when you hit your corner, that slight hesitation makes a nice crisp stitch So you'll every be time. in stitch regulated, but in the cruise mode, not in the precision. Correct. Yes, exactly. Today, Good. I'm going to work in manual. I'm going to work at 500. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of preparation. So if I was doing these designs on a quilt and I did not have a pieced block that was one inches, it would be a lot of really, really hard work to try Guess and make work. it perfect. I want it to look perfect, but I don't want to work hard at it. Okay. So I have my wonderful miracle tube. Pounce pad. It is a simple powder. This is the old covering, and they've just now changed the casing to the okay. new casing. I am using the we'll just put that original down there so that white pounce pad, so it brushes away. So not the iron off one. Correct. Okay. I want there is, to. There are two whites. There are two whites. You have one with the red center, and it is not just brush away. It's iron off. It's afterwards. iron off. Mm -hmm. There's a blue. There's a pink. What I recommend is that you read the instructions. I know they come with instructions. Who would know? <laughs> but there are instructions on how to remove it from your fabric. I like to choose the original white because if I put something somewhere and decide I don't want it there, I don't want to wait for anything to dry. I don't want to find an iron. I want to brush it away change my mind, repounce, and keep going. And what do you brush it with? 
So the best thing to do is this great little guy right here. Do you remember when we used to like to do the dog hair? Mm -hmm. So a simple swipe and the powder is gone and the lines of registration are gone. Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing that you can use is a microfiber cloth. Oh, really? Yes, which works fabulous as well. Um, those are probably your two best bets. Okay. And then to get it off afterwards, you just brush it the other way. I do. Yes. <laughs> I just kind of give it a little pounce uh -huh. and the powder disappears. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let's move these aside. So why do you use the powder? So today I'm going to use a one-inch stencil grid. Okay. And I see you've already gridded it I out. have. So I've marked off a couple of areas, but I simply place my grid anywhere on the quilt that I want it to be. I pounce the powder into my hand and I simply swoosh back and forth and when I lift it, I've got these great registration lines. So now I don't have to use my channel locks and stitch my grid. I can have a disappearing grid to work with. So Sue, one thing you said a little earlier about the pounce chalk because it's pounced, you pounce it like you pounce it into this Correct. Container. Mm. You do not pounce it on your fabric. Right. And I love that because then when you swish it, rub it across, it doesn't leave a whole buildup of powder that's going to just bounce, bounce, bounce you as are you're right. stitching. Now, if you tend to get a little bit of a buildup, because, you know, mine travel in my purse, in my back pocket, in the pouch of, you know, everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do tend to get a bit of a buildup. At home, to prevent that, you can store it upside down. Then your pounce idea. settles back into the pad and doesn't foof out of okay. your upper casing when you pounce it into your hand. But if you get a little too much in there, you can simply take your fingers and just rub it right in. Okay. Okay. Just so that you don't. Just so it doesn't it's powder It's going to build up on your hopping foot and get chalky white. Correct. And so. Anytime you're using pounce, you always want to service your machine by cleaning it, clean the bobbin area, clean around it after you've used chalk so that... And I'm so glad you mentioned that because you know me, I'm, I'm not a good maintenance person, but I use the pounce a lot. So every time I change my bobbin, I actually clean out all around my hopping foot because it does tend to build up in there. Yeah. And I am in a lot of humidity, so it tends to stick to the foot. So I just want to get in there each time I change my bobbin and really clean it out well. And it can get on your tracks. I actually had that happen once. Got on the track yes. and on the encoder wheel and it stopped it stopped doing stitch regulation. Correct. You know, and it's like, what is happening? Well, and it can but just give you a little bump. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that I'm going to always recommend is that in between your quilts or if you're doing a large quilt, when you take a break for the day, after you've cleaned everything up here, a little bit of batting, clean all your tracks on the back. Then you don't get those bumps. Then you don't get all those little bumps. And all it's right. good to go when you come back. Okay, so you've, we've talked about how to get a grid on there so yes. that we can start this. We've got our thread, everything, our tension is right. We're on our Simply 16, which is Love an it. incredible little machine with our little foot frame. So yes. we are just ready to go. And now, I want to just mention to everyone, I am sitting. Yes. This is a perfect machine for you just to tuck right in underneath. I'm going to be working in a very small area. Once I fill this area, I'm going to needle down, put, reposition my chair, scooch right in where I'm comfortable, and stitch again. So you're not going anywhere fast, right? I am going to go slow and steady wins the race, and I'm just going to fill and travel fill and travel. Remember when it used to take us six months of Sundays to do our quilts? And you mean we that hand? loved <laughs> it. <laughs> I miss that. I have, over the last probably five years, decided that when I get on my machine, this is my happy space. Mm -hmm. So I want to not be thinking about how quickly I can be getting it done, but how much I'm enjoying what I'm doing right here, right now not think that this is monotonous, this is, right. but it's the enjoy, really the I happy space. I want to enjoy it. A little bit of chocolate with it, and yep, for you, a, a, lot of, a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my little coffee maker that sits right by right my machine, there. so I don't have to travel too you far. You can go forever, can't That's you? correct. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started and okay. see 
What you're going to do now, are you going to just quilt really fast? Or are you I'm going actually going to go fairly slow, and I want everyone to see the travel path. Now, I know that this is a design that most of you have either done before or seen done in several different ways. Today, I'm going to show you my favorite travel path for this. Okay. It's a little bit different than most. I'm not going to weave in and out, but I'm going to end up with the same effect. So you're going to do bumps. I'm going to just bump, 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 bump. And yeah, do you you'll sing be so that annoyed bump, of it. Bump, bump yes, it? I do. All right. <laughs> so what, what tune do you want on here? <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the size of my area that I'm filling, what I want to do is I want to create a sound that allows my movement to be all the same size. Okay. So that it looks just that little bit more consistent. Okay, because you're doing a curve. And That's some correct. people struggle with curves right. to get them equal going out of the corner, coming back in the corner without like flat lining. Flatting it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use that quarter inch hopping foot. And when I say bump, it's going to come up. The bottom of my foot is going to align with my line. Okay. And I know now that it's time to scoop back in. It may vary depending on what design we put inside, but if I continually say bump, 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 and use the corner of that foot, they're all going to be similar in size. And you're going to be able to quilt all of this without one foul flipping swoop. your thread because you have a travel path. That's right. All right, let's, okay. so let's start traveling. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go from here to this corner. I'm going to come up and over. And I like to work in a horizontal. Okay, so over and then up. All the way are up. You gonna, are you going to do this or not? Yep, I'm going to travel all the way up to here. And get this side of it? That's correct, and then I'm going to come all the way down. And then you'll travel. Okay, okay. let's go. Let's see how it works. And we got some wonderful bright colored thread on there. Got so some really nice variegated. So here we go. I'm just going to aim for my corner, and the most important thing with this is that as I come around, that I touch that thread in the center. Okay, so, so they if it all means, join. Yeah, if it means slowing down or putting that stitch regulator on, and walking it in to Whatever make sure. Whatever works for our viewers Absolutely. so that it works for That's them. correct. And this can be done on a sit-down machine. Yep. On this your can be done on any quilting machine Anything. or your domestic machine. That's correct. And it, right. you're going to have the same movement. You're just either going to be moving your fabric or you're going to be moving your head. Oh. So I'm just going to jump into the corner. So I'm going to go from here to here and here to here. And I'm just going to go bump, 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 bump. Bump. I'm going to turn up just a tweak. Bump. So you're regulating Bump. your stitch length. Bump. That's correct. And if the cus, you know, if the viewer, if you need stitch regulation, and you bought that, go ahead and you use turn it. that right on. Yes. So why I increase the speed of my machine is I'm in non-stitch regulated mode. So I'm working in manual. If my stitch is too long, like it was here, I don't want to alter my movement. I want the machine to work for me. So I'm going to speed the machine up until my movement and the speed of the machine make a nice stitch. So you were at 500 as you started. You Correct. moved up to 525. That's right. Okay. And you feel that's good for you? I'm going to try and stitch just a little slower than normal today so that <laughs> everyone can see the travel path. Hold back, hold back, Sue. I've been practicing all day to slow down. So we, our <laughs> machines do have a speed up and down. Yes. So that on each handle, the speed up and the speed down. So and if, if you I was can at home stitch on the fly, and I was stitching, and I was working in a delicate area where I wanted to go a little slower, I would actually use my handles as opposed to stopping my machine. Mm -hmm. And when I was finished that delicate area, and I wanted to come out and do my free motion, zoom I would just up. zoom it up as I went. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So we've reached the top, and we're going to work our way back down. And I'm going to actually, for that second row, do a mirror image. Okay. Okay? So I'm going to come down, and I'm going to bump, 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 bump. Just going to work into my corners and down. Don't worry if you get a little bit of a twist or a slant. I can tell you've done this before. I've done it a couple of times. Now, my trick with the row on row is I am now going to travel all the way up to the top. Okay, without once I've doing done, your... Yeah, once I've done my first row in my mirror image, I'm now only going to work on that right-hand side. Okay. So I'm just going to bump all the way up to the corner, to the corner, to the corner, to the corner. And when I come back down, I'll include this little sleeve. Okay. So I'm going to go in, out, 
back, down, out, in, down, out, in, down, bump and travel, 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 down and out, in, down, out, in, down, out, in, down, over. Now I want to finish my edge off, so I'm simply going to work my way all the way around that outside section. And I'm going to close it in so that it looks like a finished area. No thread break. You know, you didn't have to stop because something no got stop left out. Start. That's it's right. It's done. Oh my but gosh. Wait. It gets better. Oh, we take out the lines. And now I look brilliant, even though I'm not. Yes, you are. You are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, but wait, it gets better. So, so there's something you're going to put in here. Absolutely. So do, this, do we get to see or you're just going to do I'm it? I'm just going to do it. Okay. So this, of course, is a fabulous design on its own. Mm -hmm. It can be in a tiny quarter inch square. It can be in a two inch square as a background fill. Any size that you're comfortable with that fits that space, this is really enough for most. Now what okay. I want to do is... I'm going to look here really fast yeah. to see. I've yeah. mastered this. So mm -hmm. now instead of learning a new technique, I'm just going to add to it. Embellish. I'm going to embellish. Thread. So what we're going to do is we're going to ribbon this entire thing and watch how easy it is. Okay. I'm going to go outside and inside and outside and inside and out, in, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, and I'm wiggling outside the line and inside, and I'm ending right in wow. that corner. So it's like you're doing a mountain and then into a valley. You got right? it. The my mountain, mountain and, and my peak and my valley, and I'm going to travel in the exact same way. Okay. So the same movements, the same travel path, is what's going to take me through. So I don't have to learn a new travel path either. I think I I think I would draw this first before no, no. You know, to, to, uh, that muscle memory. <laughs> so when you first start, you can absolutely draw it out. That's what, awesome. Yeah, what I recommend when you first get started is to not worry so much about the precision, but just to worry about the flow and consistency of the movement. Always Does that the make high sense? and then the low. Just That's remember correct. every one of them. The and high and then the low. For me, when I first started doing this, outside, inside, outside, yeah, inside. Yeah. And then they were all consistent, and I always left room for that next little piece to slide in there. Because it, it becomes an open gap space. And it is looking, you call this a ribbon. This is a ribbon. And it is looking like a ribbon, like a twisted ribbon in there. That's correct. And then of course I could go all the way around mm -hmm. that outside edge and just finish it up. But again, I, I didn't have to learn anything new. It's a movement that I've already mastered and a travel path that I've already memorized. And you know what it does is that if you did have a little unevenness of your actual first curve, It's okay. It hides it. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. I never care what's in front of my eyes. I only care what my brain allows my eyes to focus on. So if that means that I'm going to sneak in and sneak out to make it look even and balanced, I'm going to do that every time. Yeah, that's beautiful. No stress, nice no feel. worries. Yes. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that original design again. I have to take a little peek down here. And we're going to alter it again. So I'm going to slide up here. And today I'm going to be working always in from that bottom left-hand corner. Okay. But on a quilt, I may have to come in and travel on a different path. The reason I demo it from that bottom left-hand corner is because we take information in easier that way. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to learn a travel path that's moving away from you as opposed to towards you. Okay. So mentally I have everything upright. Okay. So now I'm just going to add right. a tiny little bit of extra. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to jump out and back 
and up. Okay, so you're doing it as you're doing the curve now. Correct. So you so don't even have to go back. I don't want to go back so and fill it. So what would you call that little I'm going to go going bump in. crescent moon or bump in Every one back. of them will have it? Every one of them. Okay. But wait, right, it gets see. better. I don't We're see gonna, that on no, here. No, it's you not on there. <laughs> <laughs> you're holding out on me. Listen, I'm giving you guys some extras. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go back into that corner and then I'm going to go in back bump in back now watch what happens i'm trying to stay in and around that center mark okay then when i come over this way i'm going to stretch all the way out and back uh oh so okay. i've got a long crescent moon and a short crescent so moon. on opposite of every one of your crescent moons a short one you have a little to have long, a long one little okay. long okay all right all right so we're gonna go bump in back, bump in back, bump long back. Now I don't have to remember this one and not that one. That first one that I do in an open space is always going to be little. Bump in back, bump long back, bump in back, travel down, bump long back. Oh my goodness, bump I think I can do back. this. Bump in back, you could do it. Bump long, oop. Bump, I a did short a short one. one, but it's okay, you know why? Even the professional does. Absolutely, and in the grand scheme of things, is anyone going to see one short and one long? So you're not going to hand this quilt as a gift and say, oh, by the way, I am I absolutely here. not going to point out any of my mistakes. Because there will be so many of all of these cute little bumps. That's correct. And really, in the grand scheme of things, what we're looking for is depth, texture, and balance. Uh -huh. So we don't want it all to be identical. We want a little bit of movement here and there. So if one of them is short and the other one's long, or I do several of them short to short, long to long, it's not going to matter. Okay. okay, I get this one. All right. I totally get this one. Just move yourself along to another one. Okay. I have some others that I see on your thing, on your sampler here. Yes. Let's do another one. Let's jump all the way up here. Okay. Slide over. And what do you want to see? Well, I like this Let's one here. Let's do this. So I'm going to so go. So the camera can see this. Bump. And I'm gonna slide into the middle. Okay, so we're back here. Hold on, we gotta get, okay. Bump, bump, back. Oh, bump, that's different than middle, I it was. stretch, bump, middle, stretch, bump. Now I'm gonna hit my top one first. So I'm gonna say slide, touch, back, slide, touch, back. Bounce, middle, back, slide, back. Bounce, middle, back, slide, back. Bounce, slide, bounce, slide, bounce. So the ones vertical or yes. horizontal are different than the ones you're, I think that you're gonna do vertical. Correct. Uh, okay, because I'm thinking, I, that's not what I'm seeing. That's not I, what you're seeing. But I think you're, you're getting, you're going to get there, right? I am. So as I come around, I am creating this little swoosh inside. And I'm simply just adding a little bump on the inside. So as I keep going around, okay. it twists and turns inside. All right. Is that the one you were hoping for? Well, you've combined two here, so this is, but I like what I'm seeing here because I would have never guessed you did it that way. You could do this sliding all the way through, but then you've got to change your travel path. I've already memorized my travel path. Totally. So I'm yeah. always going to work on a movement that I've already memorized and a travel path that I've already memorized. I like that swirl inside of it, that so little... Doesn't that look cool? Yes. So now we can twist this again, and we're going to end up with a little something different. Okay. So I'm gonna come in, 
and I'm going to twist here, twist here, twist here. So I'm going to double it as I go. Okay. And I'm going to create or switch it up. So one here, one here, one here, one here. Let me jump back up here. So as I go, I'm going to go in this way, in this way. So I just have one. On the other side, I'm going to go in the other direction. Okay. Oops. Now I'm twisting myself around. <laughs> okay. So where we had the long and the short, now they're not going to connect. So I have a little crescent mm -hmm, and a mm -hmm. little crescent. But wait, it gets better. I have to show you my favorite one. I'm going to come in. I'm going to swirl and back. Up, swirl, and back. Up. Now watch what happens when I start traveling in the other direction. Swirl and back. Up, swirl, so and back. So those swirls are all going the same direction. Is that correct? Or do well, you have what to flip I'm doing, those swirls? You're going to flip them. So what I'm going to do is when I'm on the bottom, I curl okay. in. And I'm actually using that line so that they stay on one side of the line or the other. So up in, back, up, in, back. When I come down this way, my curly cue is going to be on the opposite side of the line that's pounced. Mm -hmm. And look at how cute those look. They are adorable. <laughs> Seriously, I love it. And they're I'm trying to so decide which simple. of all of them that is my favorite, that I like the best, but every time you add another one, that's Well, and here's the my beauty. Favorite. Whatever you do well, you can place in here. I can come around, do a little curly cue, and then create a little flower on the inside. Okay. Whatever well, you want to do, add a little, take away a little, swoosh to the left. Now I've got to show you one that everyone just goes crazy so over. So before you go, though, I, I've got this one figured out. Yes that the back side always has to lay against that. Correct. That works. So wherever you're bumping over to, that's the way you're going to come around and into your swirl. Then I you watched. don't have to invert it in that's your brain. Right. It's something, it's like I had to think that through and there it was. Correct. Okay. okay. So let's get one more in here before we go have to it. go too far. And I'm just going to slide down. I'm going to do this one nice and quick. So I'm just going to put a little twist. Twist down, twist up. It's oh. just a simple little loop. We've all been doing loops since we were sitting on our grandma's laps on the sewing that machine. That is not a hard one to do at all. Very, very simple. Draw with her, draw with her, and yes. I think you'll get it. Really yeah. quick and easy. And again, the more I add to this, the more defined it becomes mm -hmm. and the more intense of a background it creates. That same path though. Same path. So here we go. I'm going to go over, bump, back. Over, bump, So a little bit more back. thready. That's correct. So I'm going to tack it down and make it a little so bit more path stipulish. Gets you back over. A jump of three will get you right back to where you started every time. Now watch what happens when I come around. It's going to be filled in like a little blooming flower. And come back this way. And my one, two, three. There's one, two, three. And look at how well that fills that space that in. That whole space, yes. So oh if I goodness. was using a tone thread that was the same color as my background fill, I would literally just be creating a stippleish look without the hours and hours of stippling. Because it would pack all of that space down except for that tiny little space in the center. 
which is cool to have that little tiny space. Just That's a little right. A little bit of puff. Like to have that little puff pop out. Bumping back. And one more, and we're almost done this whole section. You and can again, really get the effect of it. When I'm at home, I love to combine several of these. So I'll do a ribbon and then a curl, and a ribbon and okay. a curl. The secret to that is leaving a full entire space, so two full rows of your squares mm -hmm. with nothing in them, and then flipping to the next. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my goodness. Oh, now let's just really quickly get rid of some of this background. It looks so much nicer with nothing behind it. And suddenly, even the mistakes look precise. Even the cheating lines are clear. gone. And That's you right. are amazing. And people say, oh, how'd you get them so even? Well, <laughs> let me tell you a little secret. <laughs> oh, no, it's just my eye. I can do it. I'm just you so don't talented. You have to give away all your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be hard, though, That's to look right. spectacular. That's so beautiful. I want to keep it in my happy space. Simply pass of just going through, and Absolutely. that was easy. It was. And Very then, simple. And, and I think the thing that, you know, because I was fretting. I was worried over You're there thinking, worried. are you getting all of those accurate? That's like, ah. Oh. Right. It didn't matter. No. Nope. Once I saw the rest of it, it did not matter. And once those so lines that disappear. Just, that just frees you up. That's right. And now, can you remember where I went too short and along? No. No. <laughs> and we've only done these tiny little blocks. We're talking about a large quilt. Put it as a background That's feel. That's right. Don't sweat the small stuff. And so, could you use a larger grid and do the same? You could do this as a very large grid and do a background fill. But wait, it gets better. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you could take a triangle grid or a hexi grid, pounce it out, follow that same travel path all the way up, Fill in on the way down. So then that has a different look. Multiples of different looks, yes. Okay. So play, play, so play. So those grid stencils are wonderful. And this is a one inch grid. This is a one inch grid. So depending on how large your squares are or how tiny your squares you are. Because you can go half inch grid. You can go half inch grid. With a half inch grid, I can do a little and a large, and a little, and a oh, large. A little checkerboard type and it's effect. it's stunning, yes. So you'd go with a finer thread with that? I absolutely would. I would probably go more to a polyester. I'm not a sheen girl, so I would go to a low sheen poly. Uh -huh. I would try and go a shade lighter or a shade darker than my background so that I really had that shading and intensity as I stitched it out. Anything else you want to tell us? Relax, enjoy, and have fun. Take something you have already mastered, that you already love, mm -hmm. and just play with it. Doesn't have to be hard. That's right. And, and now it's time for chocolate, right? Oh, oh. it's so time for chocolate and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the chocolate and you got the coffee, right? Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us with our HQ Live today. Remember, we're on every month. Come back next month for a new subject. Awesome. Let's, let's keep putting. Okay, let's. I have to put my eyes back on. All right. Did you okay. notice my glasses matched my thread? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs>